Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 70 of 2023, amending Article 1 of Decree 60 of 2013, on assigning the Ministry and Minister responsible for the implementation of Decree 21 of 2013 regarding the regulating and fundraising for public purposes, based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Majesty also issued Decree 71 of 2023, amending some provisions of Decree 61 of 2021 on the establishment of the General Sports Authority, based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the newly appointed Ambassador of the Philippines to Bahrain, Angela Duan Lewis, at the Bia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahrain Philippines relations and the importance of furthering cooperation to benefit both countries and achieve common goals. His Royal Highness commended the contributions of the Kingdom's Filipino community to Bahrain's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness wished the Ambassador of Success in performing her diplomatic duties. The ambassador expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting the Philippines and His Royal Highness's commitment to advancing bilateral relations. The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the newly appointed Ambassador of Sri Lanka to Bahrain, Hirath Mundi and Silaga to the Bia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahrain-Sri Lanka relations and the importance of furthering cooperation to benefit both countries and achieve mutual goals. He wished the ambassador success in performing her diplomatic duties. The ambassador expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting His Royal Highness's commitment to advancing bilateral relations to meet common aspirations. The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs Sheikh Abdul Hussein Khalaf Al Asfour, the Chief of Public Security Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, the Chairman of the Jafari Waqf Council Yusuf bin Saleh Al Saleh, and a number of senior officials at Rafah Palace. The meeting took place following the success of this year's Ashura. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the Kingdom's social fabric derived from its diversity and commitment to a peaceful coexistence, in line with the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He commended the crucial role of the Kingdom's ministries and government agencies that they play in the success of this year's Ashura, reflecting the national responsibility of Team Bahrain. His Royal Highness also expressed gratitude to the government authorities led by the Ministry of Interior, the Jafari Waqf Council, the General Authority of Hassani Processions, the heads of Ma'atim and Hassaniyas, supervising committees and volunteers for their efforts and commitment to facilitating Ashura. The Minister and senior officials expressed their appreciation for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and extended thanks for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting and ensuring the success of Ashura. The Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, patronized the ceremony held in the Bia Palace to honor the presidents and representatives of banks and real estate companies that participated in the housing finance exhibition organized by the Ministry in June. The Deputy Premier affirmed that the development in housing services embodies the efforts towards developing social support and protection for citizens to contribute to the safety and stability of Bahraini families in light of the goals of the Comprehensive Development Process process led by His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted the continuous review of policies aimed at ensuring the sustainability of housing services and the resulting strategic government partnership with the private sector to diversify housing solutions and provide suitable services for citizens in accordance with their financial ability, needs and preferences. 
Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah noted that holding the occasion comes in celebration of the success achieved recently as a result of the cooperation between the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning and the partners from the private sector, demonstrated by the wide participation of banks and real estate companies in the exhibition and the high turnout of interested citizens. He stated that an implementation of the directors of His Royal Highness to hold events and exhibitions that introduce services and housing financing programs. Efforts will continue to increase the number of beneficiaries from government initiatives aimed at accelerating the provision of housing services. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning and all the ministry's affiliates for their efforts, hailing the efforts of banks to facilitate procedures and provide exclusive offers and exhibitions. The Minister of Housing stated that the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness to the social housing sector resulted in positive outcomes. She expressed thanks to Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah for his efforts and support to the ministry's plans and programs. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Hamidan, visited a number of work sites to directly inspect the commitment of private sector establishments to implement Ministerial Resolution 3 of 2013 regarding the ban on outdoor work during the afternoon in July and August. The Minister was briefed on the measures taken by the institutions to ensure full compliance with the decision. He praised the commitment of companies and institutions to the decision, which reflects the humanitarian and national responsibility of business owners and affirms Bahrain's keenness to protect human rights. Hamidan stressed that the decision is one of the important legislations that have humanitarian and economic dimensions, pointing out that protecting workers and ensuring their health and safety is one of the ministry's priorities. He stressed the importance of improving the efficiency and means of prevention and reducing occupational injuries and heat-related illnesses. Following the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister regarding the ability of strategic stock of food to respond to market needs, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhrum, met with the Food Wealth Committee of the BCCI remotely. They discussed a number of important issues related to food stock and consumers' needs, in addition to emphasizing the importance of stabilizing and balancing the prices of strategic food commodities during the coming period in light of the accelerating global changes. During a ceremony held in Los Angeles, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs and the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, delivered a speech regarding the launching of the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence. We are gathered here tonight to launch a new international award being initiated by the Center and to celebrate a very special story about the nation of Bahrain and our king's vision of religious freedom and peaceful coexistence around the globe. It is fitting that we are in Los Angeles tonight, home to Hollywood, a place that possesses a remarkable ability to craft and disseminate extraordinary narratives. Similarly, 
within our region, amongst the nations of the Middle East. Bahrain stands as a significant backdrop for a captivating story. This ancient and grand history advocates for diversity, embraces the infusion of cultures, and emphasizes the invaluable pursuit of peaceful coexistence, a prize that often eludes us. In its simplest form, it is the story of how religious freedom and peaceful coexistence have become the central values and tenets of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Tonight, the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence is proud to launch the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence, an international award that honors unique programs and projects that strengthen Bahrain's vision of religious freedom and peaceful coexistence. The award will be given to an individual or an organization that has embraced King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision of religious freedom and furthers global peaceful coexistence. It will be awarded annually at a special ceremony in Bahrain. Bahrain continues to play a major role in being a place where Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Baha'is, Sikhs, and Buddhists can worship freely and practice their religion openly. This history has also laid the foundation for an important document issued by the center, the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration, officially launched here in Los Angeles in 2017. This declaration guides nations in finding the path to peace and stability and celebrates religious freedom and peaceful coexistence. And today, the Bahrain Declaration remains the foundational document for all the work and educational programs of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. Under the patronage of His Majesty the King, the King Hamad Global Award for Peaceful Coexistence was launched in a ceremony held in Los Angeles. More on this report. Within the belief of the importance of peaceful coexistence, religious freedom, and consolidating the humanitarian values, the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence was launched with the aim of enhancing tolerance, coexistence, and acceptance of the other. We've had great respect for His Majesty. Uh, we met with him uh, on many occasions. He's a wonderful person. So we had a, a wonderful relationship every time, and he's done great things. He was amongst the first to do things in the Middle East that nobody thought of would be possible. The harmony between the, between the Arab world and the Jewish people and the state of Israel, that was all his work. He was a pioneer in that area and he should be very proud of it. Launching this award by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain is in honor of the continuous efforts to enhance humanitarian values and coexistence. Well, we're really thrilled to be back here in this wonderful city of Los Angeles, uh, where This is Bahrain uh, launched the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration in 2018, and then His Majesty the King created the King Hamid Global Center afterwards. So we're thrilled to be back here this evening again with the Simon Wiesenthal Center, with Chief Rabbi Marvin Heyer, who really praised uh, His Majesty the King and all of His Majesty's sincere commitment to uphold peaceful coexistence and religious freedom for all. This international award is in honor of those who seek to consolidate peace and enhance humanitarian initiatives that are in line with the efforts of the UN and the international community in combating extremism, terrorism, and discrimination. It's important to be here in Los Angeles that it's a very symbolic uh, town where uh, um, a few years ago uh, was launched the King Ahmad uh, um, 
Declaration for Peaceful Coexistence, a very important document that was quoted more than once by um, His Holiness Pope Francis during his visit in uh, Bahrain. The launching of the award affirms the keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to spreading peace and peaceful coexistence. The participants in the inauguration of the King Hamad Global Award for Peaceful Coexistence praise this Bahraini initiative in promoting peaceful coexistence. I think that the fact that these people the Bahrain first among what we hope will be many were blessed with an understanding that what has been begun should be forwarded, that there should be work, people helping one another. We in this country thought it was extraordinary that this had taken place and we're so hopeful and this step here tonight is a blessing and something that we had hoped for and now we have seen it we think it's a first step going forward peace of course very important now in the world and with all the problems going on in the world i believe that uh, an event of this stature and this kind is very important uh, to promote world peace and that is one of uh, the goals of my organization also, World Hindu Organization, not only for just Hindus, but uh, the treasurer I have appointed in my World Hindu Organization is Muslim. Bahrain is the one where all inclusive, all the stories of the people, community, live freely. And that's one of the key part. Yes, I am based here in Beverly Hill, Los Angeles. And this is the one event definitely inspires around the world to be a unanimous one community and that's what we are looking for all indian americans indians around the globe and that's a peace loving country so do we are and that's one of the reasons i'm here over the years the kingdom of bahrain has embodied its keenness to promote peaceful coexistence by adopting many initiatives and organizing many events at the local and international levels in line with the vision of his majesty the king more on this report with a unique experience and enlightened ideals, the Kingdom of Bahrain has formed a global beacon to promote peaceful coexistence in the world. Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is keen to spread the values of coexistence and rapprochement between all religions and faiths. The reception of His Majesty the King to the President and members of the General Authority of Husseini processions on the occasion of the end of the Ashura commemoration embodied the contents of His Majesty's speeches in promoting peaceful coexistence. His Majesty expressed pride in the great freedom that Bahrain enjoys and hailed the coexistence of the Bahraini society that has been known for decades. Meanwhile, the inauguration of the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence in Los Angeles reflects the vision of His Majesty the King in enhancing the values of peace and protect human rights, which are urged by all religions and international covenants. The purpose of the launch of the award is to allow international competition in everything that supports coexistence, peace and harmony. The Bahraini example in promoting peaceful coexistence and the Bahraini initiatives in rejecting hate speech and extremism and preserving the privacy of societies remain an affirmation of the efforts that countries can make in this field. The Bahraini International Initiatives, the award and the event hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain affirm the wise approach of His Majesty the King and the ancient legacy of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The fourth edition of the Palm Festival was inaugurated at the Farmers Market in the presence of the Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Sheikh Amran bin Isa Al Khalifa, the CEO of Bahrain Development Bank, Dalal Al Ghais, and the Under Secretary of the Agriculture and Marine Resources, Dr. Khalid Hassan. Sheikh Amran stressed the importance of the festival on preserving Bahrain's agricultural identity and its ancient history, noting her keenness to preserve the name of Bahrain as the mother of a million palm trees for its integral part of the ancient Bahraini heritage. She praised the unlimited support of His Majesty the King and the guidance of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and Chairwoman of the Advisory Board of National Initiative for Agricultural Development on the importance of preserving this heritage. The festival aims to encourage and support the local production of palm pro products and preserving the Bahraini agricultural identity. 
Youth City 2030 comes this year in its 12th edition, providing 2,740 training opportunities to qualify Bahraini youth, as it is considered one of the most pioneering youth initiatives in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The two rulers of San Marino, Alessandro Sacrano and Adele Tonini, received the credentials of the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to San Marino, residing in Rome, Dr. Nasser Mohammed Liblushi. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the rulers and their wishes for good health and happiness for the people of San Marino continued progress and prosperity. The rulers instructed the Ambassador to convey their greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and their wishes for continued progress and prosperity for the Kingdom of Bahrain. The UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, arrived in the Jordanian capital, Amman, where he was received by the Jordanian monarch and crown prince. The UAE President met with the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, and they discussed the strong bilateral relations and a number of regional issues. The two sides held talks on bilateral coordination as well as discussing strategic economic partnerships between them. The Saudi Foreign Ministry announced that Saudi Arabia and Kuwait reaffirmed that they jointly own rights to natural resources in the Gulf's Dura gas field. The two sides also affirmed that the two brotherly countries alone have full sovereign rights to utilize the resources in that region. According to Saudi state news agency, both countries are renewing calls for Iran to engage in negotiations on the eastern border of the Gulf's maritime divided area. Saudi Arabia and Kuwait will negotiate as one party, with Iran acting as the other side in the talks in accordance with the provisions of international law. Pope of the Vatican, His Holiness Pope Francis, concluded his apostolic visit to Portugal after several meetings he held with the church community and presiding over a prayer in Lisbon. His visit came on the occasion of the 37th World Youth Day, where he expressed his joy at being among hundreds of young people on the occasion of their International Day, calling on the youth of the world to live for their hopes and aspirations. He expressed his gratitude to everyone for their perseverance and tireless efforts to improve life opportunities for young people. Canada's government said it would stop advertising on Facebook and Instagram to respond to Meta's decision to block access to new content on their social platforms as part of a temporary test. Heritage Minister Pablo Rodriguez announced Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government's decision at a news conference. It is the latest escalation in the quarrel that erupted when Trudeau's government passed a law on June requiring digital platforms, including Meta and Alphabet Inc., to negotiate commercial deals with local publishers for featuring new content. Both tech giants said they intended to block news on their platforms by the time the law takes effect later this year.